That is Derek Gunn. I am Rob Ellis. We're hanging out with you on this Wednesday. Uh, talking some Eagles here, getting you set for the Birds and the Jets. Derek, let me ask you this. Do you worry at all about a look ahead? Um, this team Ooh. has al- always been prepared under Nick Sirianni. We know that it's one of the signatures is they 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 show up every week, right? Um, but you have Miami on deck, and the Eagles have never lost to the Jets in their history. I think they're twelve and zero historically against the Jets. Miami, that's a big one, um, and everybody's kind of excited to see that. But do you fear that at all that they'll look ahead? No, no, no. It's part it's part of the the culture and what's expected. Um, the Eagles will always tell you, and, and Jason Kelsey is always at the forefront of this. We can't afford to look past anybody because in this league, anybody can jump up on you in any given moment. Um, this is a very smart team. You have a brain trust, a leadership uh, trust that in, ingrains this in the players. We can't be looking ahead to anybody. You, that's not how you. That's not how you do this. The veteran core will not allow it to happen. The coaches will not allow it to happen. And your young quarterback, uh, he's already shown he will not allow that to happen as well. You know, the Miami game will come here soon enough. But before we get to that, we got our our primary objective is, number one, to stay unblemished and to stay at least two games up on the closest pursuer to us in the division. Number two, to get off the field relatively unscathed injury-wise. And number three, win the doggone game. Mm-hmm. I don't care how we win the game, just win the doggone game. That's all. That's all they care about. They don't look. They have 17 chances to be as good as they can be to try to secure that number one seed to make sure everybody has to come through Philadelphia again. That's how they approach this thing. You know, I am never worried about this team looking past any opponent at all. Okay, uh, I I don't think they will either. I think for a lot of the things that you just mentioned, there's a checks and balances with this team where it just doesn't happen. I think it starts with the head coach, but I think it filters down to. His coaching staff, guys like Stoutland, but certainly from a player standpoint, the quarterback, the veterans like Brandon Graham, guys mm-hmm. like Kelsey, guys like Lane Johnson, et cetera. So I I, I agree with you. I, but I, I think it's something to consider. I don't think it will happen, but I think with some teams, they could fall prey to that. So, But I don't think it will happen with the Eagles. Um, mm-hmm. All right, Jets, Derek, two and three on the season. Yep. They won two games. They won their opener, and they won their last game. The last game – Little sweet revenge for Nathaniel Hackett. They beat the Broncos. We we know how that went. They gave him a game ball, all those kind of things. But then again, Denver's got one win, and that one win came against Chicago, who basically gave them the game. Right. Um, so they've won two. They're down two offensive linemen in Dwayne Brown and Elijah Vera Tucker. They actually signed Dennis Kelly. Remember Dennis Kelly? He they just oh, signed yeah. him. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, former Eagle. Uh, but they're they're hurting on that defensive line. And Mekhi Becton seems to always have some kind of nagging injury as well. Uh, he's another one. So you would think the combination of not having a great offensive line and Zach Wilson, who to his credit has played a little bit better the last couple of weeks, but still for the season, 91 of 149, yep. four touchdowns, five picks. He's completing 61% of his passes and he's got a 74, 73.4 passer rating with a fumble. This should be a big sack day for the Eagles D line. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, um, you froze for a minute. I didn't know if that was me, me or you. You froze for okay. a minute. Okay. Um, I, I think, as I said a few moments ago, Zach Wilson has so much on his plate um, in terms of being ostracized by the media and by the fan base and by one of the greatest players that ever played a position in Joe Namath, that his head is swimming uh, in terms of not living up to being a first round pick and more people against him than with him. And I, and you can see, I, you can't emphasize this enough. Body language says a lot with a team. And from the, you got to see the Jets play one time, Um, and I've seen highlights and we see clips from other games, you can see the body language. There's a lot of frustration in that organization. And as positive as the coaching staff tries to be and the front office tries to be, they understand they're at a severe deficit with Zach Wilson under center. They get it, you know, but that's all they've got right now. That's their best option right now. And all the other options out there 
don't appear to be appealing. I mean, think about it. Um, Colin Kaepernick has put his name out there, sign me, nothing. You know, um, uh, the former quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons says he's Matt not, Ryan. In, Matt Ryan. He's not yeah. interested. Uh, and anybody else you look at um, is not going to be much better than a Zach Wilson. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a shame. And, and, you know, we all thought the Jets were going to make hay this year because of the way that roster – uh, was constructed that this team was going to be a monster to deal with. All of a sudden, the head of the monster has been cut off in 75 seconds into their season. Yeah. And so now, as positive as that they try to remain, they realize they're at a severe deficit. They go out, they put up a good front, and then all of a sudden, for the most part, the game gets away from them in a big game situation, and it's completely different. I think in this game, the Eagles are going to control the clock offensively. You're going to see a lot of defensive players with hand, from the Jets with hands on their knees by the fourth quarter sucking wind because the Eagles are controlling the clock, and it's going to be good night game over. Um, this, this, has got to be, this has got to be a nightmare season for the Jets organization. It was the perfect storm. When they got Aaron Rodgers, it was the perfect storm of what they did this entire offseason to, to put this team together to combat the likes of Miami and Buffalo for that division title. And now they're more concerned about battling New England for the bottom of the division. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, um, uh, let's just go offensively, Derek. They're they're 24th in scoring, 18.6 points per game. They're 11th in rushing, 123.2, and dead last, dead last, 160.4 passing yards per game. Now, like I said, he's played a little bit better uh, the last couple of games. They beat uh, Denver. And, you know, to his credit, he hung in there against Kansas City. He showed yep. some heart in that game. Yep. Yep. But I think ultimately when it comes down to the kind of heat that he's going to get in this game with this defensive line, I think he will make mistakes. I think it will result in turnovers. I think it will result in third and longs. And then uh, the Jets punting deep in their own territory, giving the Eagles shorter fields. That's where I think the game is won ultimately for the Eagles um, is – you know, the Jets are going to try and run it because Brees Hall's very good. Brees Hall's got 387 rushing yards, uh, 7.2 yards per carry. He ripped off a giant one last week against Denver. So uh, he's a guy to be respected. But I think considering how good the Eagles have been against the run, I don't see him running wild on the Eagles. I just don't. I think I think Zach Wilson might be your leading rusher uh, for the Jets this Sunday out of necessity because because he's going to be running for his life. Um, I think they're going to lock down Brees Hall. You know, they're going to make the concerted effort to make sure Brees Hall does not get loose. Um, and, and I think Zach Wilson will have to run a lot because I think if the Eagles bring the heat on him early, um, he's going to be looking to his right and to his left more so than he is straight ahead down the field trying to find a receiver. And that's when you have a quarterback at right where you want him. If you can get him to 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 get out of his mental mechanism – of, okay, this play is a three-step drop, this play is a five- or seven-step drop, because once you get to three, five, or seven, you've got op 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 uh, opposite jerseys bearing down on you. It's going to mess up a lot in terms of uh, continuity for that offense. Um, now, with the way the Eagles secondary plays receivers, if, if I'm the Jets' offensive brain trust, Nathaniel Hackett, I'm shortening up all my receivers' routes this week. You know, A.J. Brown has made a, 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 a killing because DBs have so much respect for him that that quick slant route that he runs is virtually unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only measure of success the Jets may find in the passing game is to shorten up the passing routes, you know, quick slant routes, hitch, hitch routes, so on and so forth. Outside of that, they don't have a prayer this game. As good as that defense is, they don't have a prayer this game. Yeah, let's let's go with the defense for a minute. So um, points per game allowed – you know, not bad. 21, it's 14th. Not not terrible. Derek, for as much talent as they have up front, yep. these are running all over them, man. They're, yep. they're getting up yep. 146.2 yards per game on the ground. That's 29th in the NFL. Yep. And they're they're okay against the pass. They're 14th. I mean, it's for, for that much talent, the numbers are either mediocre or bad in a lot of ways. Now, they have Quinn and Williams, who's an absolute monster at defensive tackle. The guy is legit. I'm a big Jermaine Johnson fan. Liked him when he was coming out. Quincy Williams is really good. C.J. Mosley's really good. They have Sauce Gardner. We talked about you know what, whether or not D.J. Reed's going to be able to go, and that's just to name a few. There's a lot of talent 
on that defense. But I think they're 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 on the field a lot because the defense or the offense is a lot of three and outs, stalled drives, those kind of things. And maybe that's taking its toll a little bit because they you would think new, you know, just from a number standpoint with the talent they have, that it'd be better than that. Um, I think Quinnen Williams is arguably the best D tackle in the game right now. Um, uh, his quickness off the burst off the snap is, is, is impeccable. Uh, he is a nightmare by himself, but he can't, he, he can't win it by himself. And the Eagles do a great job of taking, look at what they did against Aaron Donald in terms of taking out the best D, D lineman in games and, and, and making them a non-factor. Um, I just, I just, I just, I just, just think that when you look at the Jets' defensive numbers, I think it's a worn down defense. To be honest, mm. I think they're on the field so much that basically, I don't care how good you are, you know, if you can't get off the field, you know, and if you're, and if, and, and, and if your offense is giving the ball back with a bunch of three and outs, eventually you're going to wear it down. And with this Eagles running attack, the Eagles are going to try to hit them with the run. And if they're successful with the run, as the numbers indicate, teams have been successful against the run uh, uh, with the run against this team. It's going to be a long day for this defense. It really is. And if DJ Reed doesn't play, you know, that handcuffs them even further. I was just looking at the depth chart defensively, just defensively. They have six players already on IR, six players on defense Jeez. in terms of depth for this team. And they have one who's completely out. You know, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six players on this defense in a 4-3 defense that are on IR. DJ Reed is questionable. Uh, Brandon Eccles is questionable. Mm. Um, and, and Jarek Bernard Converse is out. You know, he was a, a backup cornerback as well. So they, they've been hurt. They've been hurt everywhere. You know, even on offense, including Rodgers, this foreign offense that's on IR. You know how much that affects your depth when you thought you would have certain people and now you're scrambling because you got to pull down practice squad players? Right. Or you know maybe get players that that are sitting at home waiting for somebody to call you just to fill a void on the roster. So not only has the quarterback hurt them, but they have been decimated by injuries in a lot of cases. Wow, you know. So um, as talented as this team is, it is such a flawed team because of the quarterback and because of the multitude of injuries that they've had. And so this season has been a nightmare for the Jets. And I do believe there's a certain mindset now within the Jets. Hey, you know, we get paid to go out there and give our best effort. Let's do that. And they know when it gets to this, you can feel when it gets to a certain point of a game when you're a player that things are just spiraling out of control. Mm -hmm. And I just think the Jets, you know, they go in there hoping to hoping for the best. <clears throat> but at a certain point of a game, it becomes a defeatist mentality because they know they don't have a prayer because the offense can't help them out on the defense. Right. Yeah. That yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, all right. A couple other things to of note. Uh, with them, you know, I, I don't know if you're, let's say Joe Douglas, or you could even maybe put Joe Douglas into this category. Do you feel like there's like Robert Sala, you almost have to throw it out, whatever happens this year because of the injury to Rogers, or do you think he's on a hot seat? No, I, I think, I think Rogers being out buys him another year because, you know, how many teams can go from an Aaron Rodgers to a legitimate backup in the National Football League? Yeah. There are a lot of teams that don't have legitimate backups, but they're backups because you got to fill the void somehow. There's a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL that should not be playing in the NFL. They're stealing money. Mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of them have made a, a, a career of being backups, a journeyman backup, making good seven figure income for nothing, you know, for the most part. Um, I think when you look at Robert Sala and Joe Douglas, Joe, I think Joe Douglas has done his job in terms of drafting, bringing in certain free agents. And of course the big coup was pulling off the Aaron Rodgers deal. You don't have Rodgers, you know, so basically you buy yourself at least, a, at least another year because of that. And I think the Jets fan base is as vocal as they are and, and as frustrated as they are. Um, they're smart enough to realize that without Aaron Rodgers, you're not going anywhere. We're not plain and simple. Yeah, You're not going anywhere. Yeah, I, I think there, there's only so much you can ask your defense to do. Um, you know, uh, all right, we'll stop the other team, take the ball away, maybe potentially score. It's like, you know, that works for a game, that works for a couple quarters if somebody goes down, but eventually that doesn't work over the long haul of a season, and it's just not going to work. I, look, I think this should be a game, Derek. If we continue to see the Eagles' passing game grow the way it has the last two weeks, and as you know, as good as the Eagles have been in rushing the ball. And as good as the Eagles' defensive line is, I, 
yeah, it, it sets up to be a game that really shouldn't be that close. Um, I, I, I just don't see it. I, I don't see how the Jets ultimately stay in this game uh, long haul. I mean, are there some threats there? Yeah, is Garrett Wilson a threat, a guy you got to worry about? Brees Hall, a guy you got to worry about? All these players we named Absolutely. on the defensive side? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're all good. Every But every team in the end. Like, think about it from this standpoint. If you just go through who the Eagles played over the, the last, I don't know, take it back a couple of weeks. Washington's defensive tackles are excellent, right? And right. you still ran all over them. Tampa Bay has Vita Vea and those guys, and you still ran all over them. Um, you know, I don't, I don't worry about that part of it. I think the Eagles will figure it out. The Eagles will impose their will eventually. And you got guys up front like Lane Johnson and Kelsey and that crew and you know, my lot is playing better. They'll, they'll be fine, you know? And and the, the beauty is Sue Opeta stepped in there very nicely for them. Yes. Played well. And, and when you look at the takeaway give a, giveaway department, which is so instrumental at times in the success or failure of the outcome of a game, the Jets actually have more takeaways than Eagles do, nine to eight. But the Jets have given the ball away eight times compared to the Eagles five. So the Jets, you know, when they get the ball for the offense, the offense is giving it right back, you know? which is even more demoralizing or the, yeah. or the offense or the defense gives the ball to the offense and the offense can't do anything with it. Yeah. They're lucky if they get three points out of it, you know? Um, so, so that's why I say, you know, it, it's, it's a physical battle, but it's also a psychological war. And here we are at Wednesday and the Jets and the Eagles already know that the decisive psychological advantage going into this game is with the Eagles because of the way the teams have played this year. No There's doubt. no question. The Eagles hold the psychological edge in going up against this team because they have been anything but flawless. They're five and zero. Oh. The Jets have stumbled to two and three. They're scraping just to get above water, yeah. you know, at two and three. And every week they know when they get up, go up against an opponent that's just as good as them. The prospects of them winning that game are less than fifty percent. Yeah, well said. Well said. Hey, good stat from Zach Berman, uh, who, who does an excellent job. Covering the birds, uh, I want to make sure I'm crediting him right now. Uh, so Zach is now uh, covers the Eagles for uh, PHLY. Uh, yeah. Does a very good job with that. Uh, but so he, he, we talked about the Eagles' issues in the red zone. Derek, how about this? Zero touchdowns from the 11 yard line to the 20 for the Eagles this year. That's uh, that's not Eagles' offense. That's yeah, man. That's surprising. That's that's when I looked at the numbers on Monday. I was I was flabbergasted. Five the field Eagles, goal attempts in in that yeah. in that situation. The Eagles Eagles had forty six percent efficiency in red red zone scoring before the Rams game. Mm. They come out of the red the Rams game two for six in that department. So obviously that percentage goes down um, significantly. This this is not that Eagles between the twenty scoring team that we expected. Yet it's a team that's still putting up 28, 30 points a game. Yeah. Just to show you how how good they are, they can score from anywhere on the field, right. you know. But but when you play those better teams and you get inside that twenty, you better be able to come away with sevens instead of threes, because that other team with a potent offense like the Kansas Cities, the Miamis, the Buffaloes, they can walk down the field. Let's face it, this is not a shutdown Eagles defense. No, I mean, no, it's the, not. Crazy. It is very much not that. You're going to have to score. Your offense is going to have to score. score this year. Yeah. So you got three or four opponents that can walk down the field. Hey, Washington walked down the field on them in less a little over a minute and scored, scored a game. Scored with, yeah, second left or whatever it was. Yeah. You know, so you know they, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to put up some points. And when I say points, I don't mean threes. You got to put up sevens to put pressure on your opposition, whether you're playing them in your house or their house. Yeah. You know this 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 getting threes is it, gonna come back and bite them somewhere. You know. I I agree. I hundred percent. It's gonna bite them. And, and if you look at it, Derek, the, la, according to Zach, last season. They scored six touchdowns from that area and attempted eight field goals all year. The Eagles are already at five through five right, games. Right, so, right. all right, if I asked you what what troubles you the most from you know through five yeah. games, would you put that there, or would you say, and it, you can fill in the blank whatever one you want too? But is it that, or is it still the passing defense, which did a nice job in the second half against the Rams, mind you? But what what's m most troubling for you from what you've seen through five games? Oh, it's still the pass defense. Okay, There's no question, it's the pass defense. You have two Bo uh, Pro Bowl caliber corners out there who are thirty and 32, 33 years of age. 
Um, you're mixing in a bunch of new guys. Reed Blankenship has played well for this defense, but you're also incorporating a lot of kids. If one goes down, look at what you're doing. You're bringing up guys, Eli Ricks, you know, Goodrich, even Justin Jefferson, who's played well at times. They're still young players. They're still learning. Now you've had to bring in another player off the street in Bradley Roby to try to help, you know, calm that calm that down. Right. I think the pass defense for me is still the most frustrating aspect of this Eagles team right now through five games. Because it isn't part of that too. You feel like offensively they'll figure that out. Like there's too much talent there for them, for them to not get going, you know, in the red zone in terms of cashing touchdowns. With the defense right now, you know, Bradley Roby helped, but is he ultimately the answer? Yeah, you know, they 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 still have a lot of inexperience back there, you know, on the back end. That's where I I look at the defense a lot more sort of, you know, in, in question than I do with the offense. I think the offense, it'll come. I don't like what I've seen, but it'll come. With the defense, I don't know that it's going to get dramatically better on the back end. Um, I don't think it will, but what, what do you expect, you know? Um, the only thing we can hope for is a similar situation that Kansas City went through last year. Mm -hmm. Kansas City played a bunch of kids in the back end of their defense and still found a way to win 14 games because of that man named Mahomes mm -hmm. and because right. of the offensive structure they had. They weren't shutting people down. It was an opportunistic defense. And so far, this Eagles defense has been an opportunistic defense, a key turnover when it needs it, a key sack when it needs it. It's not a shutdown defense, as we've seen through five games. When you look at the teams they've played through five games, um, they haven't played an offensive juggernaut yet. Okay. You know, Even the Rams, the Rams are an evolving offense with the new young kids there. And, of course, they didn't have Cooper Cup for, you know, for, for four of those games, you know. Um, no, you, Derek, you're right. So think about it from this standpoint. Once you get past the Jets, okay, yeah. you're talking about Miami, arguably the best offense in football, right? Yep. A Washington team that what put up uh, 31 points. 31. Uh, Dallas. I know they're coming off a bad loss, but still. Kansas City, Buffalo, San Fran, Dallas yeah. again, Seattle. Yeah. So you, you're you're going to get literally seven weeks, eight weeks straight of either really good offenses or an offense that put up a lot of points against you. Yep. So if that defense isn't necessarily great, which I don't, neither one of us think is, and we don't think it's great defense, good, really strong defensive line, but your offense is going to have to be really good. It's a good thing they're progressing here because they're yep. going to need to be on the money. Yeah, they, they, they've uh, had to uh, muddle their way through five games in terms of figuring out what they need to do. Um, the, the passing game wasn't there. All of a sudden, the last two games, it is there. They're controlling the clock. They're chewing the defenses up, running the game, uh, running the ball with authority. Um, and they're still not where they want to be as an offense. Yet, you know, four consecutive games, they've put up over 415 yards of offense being flawed. I'll take that. Give me that every day yep. until they figure it out. But the competition does get stiffer, a whole lot stiffer over a stretch over a stretch of games that's much bigger than the stretch of games they're going through right now, including the Jets. Absolutely. Um, better figure it out now. Better yep. figure it out now. Get it right. Agreed. All right, let's come back. We'll uh, we'll set our sights on the Phillies. We know it's Bryce Elder. We know Bryce Elder Elder will be going against Aaron Nola. We'll talk about this game. We'll preview this game uh, and where this series is headed and how critical this game is, uh, certainly to uh, whichever team wants to survive and get to the NLCS. We'll discuss it all when we get back. Don't go anywhere. Derek Gunn, Rob Ellis, hanging out with you on this Wednesday Sports Take. All right, Pro Action Restoration. Yes, Pro Action Restoration. If you have a home, you have a business, property that you own, and you go through the, the pain, the inconvenience, the unknowing, fire, water, smoke, mold damage. You're saying to yourself, I don't know how to clean this up. I don't know how to fix this. I got to make sure this is right. Is it livable? You reach out to Pro Action Restoration because that's what they do. And they're on call 24 hours, seven days a week to assist. So you have issues in the middle of the night. You have issues on a holiday. You have issues early in the morning, whatever the case may be, a Saturday. Reach out to them uh, because they're always available. And I did on a Saturday, in fact. And they got right over to my parents' house, cleaned up the place. Crew was professional, clean. The price was very reasonable. Uh, it was a great experience all around. They are licensed, bonded, fully insured. They've been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. ProAction will work in conjunction with your insurance company. So it can be any of these and then some. Water, fire, smoke damage, mold remediation. But if there's something else you're not sure about, 
just feel free to reach out and give them a call. 610-623-3760. 610-623-3760. Or online at proactionrestoration.com. That's proactionrestoration. 